we're all here because mobile is growing incredibly, uh, incredibly fast, yet it seems that the dollars are not keeping up with the time spent. And the thesis, at least my thesis, and I think many of the people in this room is, because the measurement solutions haven't been there. So this panel is going to try and dispel that notion that, or the notions that measurement is not ready for prime time in mobile. In fact, it is. And my esteemed panelists here are going to try to convince you of that. So David, how is, clearly you guys are a big player in mobile measurement, but um, can you tell the audience a little more about how you're shaping mobile measurement specifically with, Placed, with what Placed is doing? Yeah, so we've got an opt-in panel of half a million users where we measure where they go in the physical world 24-7. So we see about 1,000 latitude and longitudes per user per day. And for each store visit that we identify, there's, it takes about 80 latitude and longitudes. So when you're in a Costco, a Starbucks, you're walking around, you're generating that location data, we use all those location points to actually figure out you're at the Starbucks versus the Dunkin' Donuts across the street. And then we work with Millennial to actually tie that back to digital advertising. So we can go in and say, someone who saw an ad three days later actually walked into a given retailer, a restaurant after that ad exposure. And we can also show you the lift associated with that. So someone who didn't see the ad versus someone who did see the ad. And we've seen some really interesting insights. As one of our biggest partners, we are able to cut the data across things like competitive conquesting, rich media, location-based targeting. And the tactics actually generate about anywhere from three to 10x difference depending on what the client is or who the client is and what the tactic that you take is. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, Rachel, same question. Oh, you're gonna, sorry, I was so involved in what he said <laughs> that you're gonna have to repeat the question. Sure, sure. So, so your organization, you're, you're the only person up here who's actually spending money, right? right? Well, Which, on this panel, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on this panel. Uh, not in the room, hopefully, people, uh, but certainly on the panel. Um, you, you and your organization, I would think, would clearly have some influence on who measures what and how the measurement occurs. Like, just tell me how you think about measurement in mobile. Oh, well, you know, gosh, that's such a loaded question. I mean, it, the, a big part of my job is figuring out what the right metrics are and what the right measurement strategy is for each particular client and what's going to work for a, a Paramount versus an Ikea versus a Marriott are very different things. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is working with the, you know, working with our partners like Millennial and working with partners like Placed through Millennial and the, the Nielsen Catalinas to figure out, well, you know, what's the measurement criteria? What's going to make the client sit up and take notice? Great. Yeah. That's no, your I, question? I, I mean, yeah. it's, it, yeah. I feel like I constantly say it's case by case, but when you're asking someone who's working with on any given day, uh, you know, a telco, uh, a travel and hospitality brand, um, you know, a handful of CPG clients, and then a film studio. It's, it's going to be different strategy KPIs and are different KPIs. Different. Sure. For, it's not a there can be only one yeah, kind yeah. of proposition. It could be walking into a movie theater, it could be purchasing a movie ticket, it could be all sorts of things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, and John, um, Data Logics, now Oracle, provides all kinds of measurements for measurement reports. And, how is mobile different than other media? You obviously do both, both uh, digital and mobile, uh, or yeah. online and mobile. H how do you view mobile being different? I think the biggest difference about mobile is just the fragmentation, um, that you have a lot of people engaging on the mobile device, but then actually performing an action elsewhere, be it on another device or offline. So uh, while David's company focuses on location visitation, um, data Logics and these other two panelists focus on um, point of sale data. Um, these guys in CPG, we do CPG, automotive, and, and retail. Yeah. Um, so it's really connecting that fragmentation of engagement with um, with where actually the um, the real action occurs. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question because I, I sat you two next to each other for a yeah. reason, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Can, right. <laughs> so I think when, uh, when we think about measurement, you know, pretty broadly, um, one of the big things is the notion of, of incrementality, uh, and really, you know, not in a correlative sort of, sort of sense, um, but really in more of a causal sense, and understanding. Did your ad actually drive somebody to, to make a, an incremental purchase, or was this a purchase that was going to happen um, in lieu of that ad? And I think one of the big challenges that the CPGs face today, especially, um, is making the, the connection to offline transactions from mobile with enough scale to make that kind of very robust comparison. And, and scale is, I think, one of the, the big things that we've had the challenge with in terms of, of onboarding. And that's where we really look to our partners like DataLogics and the Twine Datas of the world who are making those connections in a very deterministic way uh, at scale so that we can make those kind of robust measurements. That's 
great. So the, the title of this panel is CTR can kiss my A dollar sign dollar sign. And Rachel is, as, uh, as I said, the only person spending money on this panel. Um, we had some discussion backstage that you don't necessarily agree well, yeah. that, that, that clicks are, you know, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be in the equation. No, I mean, I think they matter. What about click to call? You know, um, they're click, click to a store locator. I mean, the click matters. I just don't think it can be the end-all, be-all only criteria. I think that's the problem, thinking that it's just the click. And I, I don't think, certainly among my clients, I think it's a misconception that we're that, you know, emotionally bonded to the idea of nothing but the click. Um, I'm definitely more interested. I mean, there's a lot of talk about time spent yeah. as a metric. Um, I think time spent's definitely meaningful. But time spent still, if you think about it, the time I spend, I could be spending time in front of an ad and still not really absorbing the message. So it's another example of, well, time spent would be a fantastic metric to be adding into the mix. But to me, it's time spent plus engagement with the ad. Because for us, as we move further and further away from the concept of the, the click and the, or just the click and the static banner, um, the mobile experiences we're designing are getting very engaging um, and very interactive. So did someone spend two minutes with this video and also um, you know, touch a hot spot in the video? Did they like it on Facebook? Did they you know, e email some information to themselves? Um, what did they actually do? That's, that's what's more meaningful to me than anything else. You know, and, and the constant only tells me so much. And killing the static banner would go a long way towards, towards achieving, <laughs> achieving that, right? That so I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sad, I have to admit, to see that go away. <laughs> I think we're going to see. Is yeah. anybody going to miss Does everybody believe the static banner is you know, not the best out there? Uh, we're going to see some of our work later uh, that shows some of the capabilities at Millennial. And, and hopefully, we will start to see less and less static banners out there. Perfectly. Rachel, um, do, you, do you get concerned, though, I mean, when you're looking at certain actions, like, say, a like on Facebook or an email, that you're actually judging the success of the whole campaign on a subset of consumers that may be different than the core audience? Oh, gosh, that's a tough one. I mean, I think you, you have to look and aggregate. Well, it depends. Again, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm always saying it depends, but it, does. it depends. I mean, how many interactions are in the ad, right? Um, is it... You know, you someone you know spun a product around and looked at it 360 degrees and then liked it on Facebook. Is it you know is 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 there one interaction with the ad or are there multiple interactions? If there's one interaction within the ad and a certain number of people did it, well, I mean, I see your point with Facebook. Like, well, what about all the people who aren't on Facebook? Um, but that's even you know, even that's with clicks, situation. you're looking at such a tiny percentage of all the views actually uh -huh. have a click. And we find when we look at that audience relative to the whole that those actually share very different characteristics. Well, right. But so you're talking comparatively like you have to look at segments within the, the entire exposed audience? That's right, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's true. I think you have to look at the whole audience of exposure and then look at the various interactions that happened within it. Right. Yeah. So, I'm so not saying like, like, you know, don't look at that bigger part of the picture. I'm going to send this down to Wyatt down at the end there. So um, we're, I, I think we're going to have a pretty healthy debate on whether CTRs matter or, or matter less or more uh, as a KPI. What would you suggest as an alternative? You know, I think uh, click-through rate is still really important. It's one metric in the spectrum. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really about the dimensionality of what's available in mobile. Um, I think mobile's really the first medium that's an extension of ourselves. It's always with us. It both commands our attention and we can demand attention from other people. So it's looking for those types of interactions that you can really apply back to purchase data, that you can apply to other media data. I mean, I really think mobile's one of the first interactive, truly interactive, in that you're watching the TV and you can be on your mobile device, you could be in a stadium and you know you're being exposed to outdoor advertising. I mean, it's really a rich data set and there's so much different ways to look at the interaction of the consumer with the advertising message. Uh, I think it provides excellent opportunities beyond just, you know, I clicked on one thing. Yeah, so wh where do you think we are in the measurement spectrum in mobile? Are we, are we uh, at parity with what's going on in the online world? Are we 50% there? Are we 20% there? I think we're mostly at parity, and I think it's actually going to outgrow other media because of that interaction capability. Because of the dimensionality. Well, I think exactly. that's an important point because we can't, we can't measure the two equally because back to your question before, I think you'd asked like, what's different about yeah. mobile, and there are so many, 
there are so many new mediums that we didn't have before, you know, yeah. in-app ads, you know, downloads as a metric, app re-engagement, um, historic, not like not just location, but historical location, not where am I right now, but where am I habitually every, you know, every Tuesday morning. Um, there's so much more to measure that if you looked at us, you know, if you tried to create parity between how we measure clicks on the desktop and how we're measuring mobile, it, you, you can't measure the two equally because there's just so much more to measure yeah. in the mobile ecosystem. Beacon notifications, push notifications, right. Right. Like all these things touch interactions. You know, back to my point of like the click, the click on the desktop versus the touch interaction where they, I spin the product 365 degrees, where I, you know, all those fun units where you can kind of lift a, lift a shade up with your finger or, yeah. you know, unco like erase something that's hiding an image. All these things that we didn't have on the desktop. So it's going to take us a while to figure out how to assign how, how value to, measure, to them because yeah. they're yeah. new and there's so many more of them than, yeah. than they're on the desktop. Yeah, I think the makes, makes it to sense. mobile give you, can give you more context and more richness that you've never had before. I mean, well, other Ge forms Geo of brings, measurement. Yeah, Geo brings a whole nother layer uh, that, that yeah. we never had before. Yep. But then you get to, to John's question, I think. If I understood you correctly, you're talking about the, um, the question of like a, a, you know, scale. As you add, like with targeting, as you add on more criteria. Oh. I'm talking away from my mic. As you add on more criteria, your audience gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So you're, we're all very wary of adding on more targeting criteria because then your, your scale shrinks. And how do you make sense of a campaign when you're adding on all these, not targeting criteria, but additional measurement criteria? And isn't it simpler just to like, just dial it back to the click or the impressions? And so I think, I, I feel like that's part of the problem. It's simpler and there's just fragmentation, confusion. Yep. You know, we, how are we gonna make sense of this if we have five different metrics? in measuring this ad. I mean, is that where you were kind of going with that? I was thinking about how when you're looking at the, when, you're, when you choose a particular action mm -hmm. as your KPI, are you, are you putting too much weight behind the audience that's doing that action yeah. and ignoring the whole? Yeah, but that's, that's like the mindset of choosing one KPI, right. right? So like, can we open ourselves up to having more than one KPI? Right. And, and what, I, I have a few questions later in the panel that we'll, we'll get into that a little more deeply. Yeah, because I think that's right. It's, it, you get it. Does the media planner get it, right? So when they come to you and say, hey, look, this campaign performed really well. We had a high CTR because that's easiest for them to wrap their head around as opposed to we had 17,000, you know, a 1.7% a, a people who actually erased the ad or whatever it was with their finger. So you're right. All these different ways of measuring, I think, uh, are, are bringing... Um, a lot of challenges and opportunities to, uh, to, to the agency world. Uh, uh, you know, to, to the point, to, to carry on, I'll give a real example to what I was saying before. So when we initially started working with Facebook, um, their strategy was really all about the fan. And it was all about gaining incremental likes and gaining fans and driving to that branded homepage. And so when we worked with Lexus, their strategy was to go after Lexus fans and try to get more likes on the page. Um, well, then we started digging into that audience. Okay, you're driving towards people to visit the page, but who are these people? And we started evaluating. They were, there were really two camps. It was people who already own Lexuses, and they were just gonna buy that car again anyway. Or it was aspirational buyers. It was people who were fans of Lexus, but these were kids in high school. They're not gonna afford a Lexus. And they're actually not your target audience. So are you kind of pushing everything towards a certain KPI and really kind of ignoring the, the audience? Hey, question? John, that, that's a great segue into some of, some of the uh, uh, work that we've done with, with David and Placed in that, I don't know, we've done 50, 60, <laughs> 70, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of measurement reports <laughs> that are around walk and rate and, and, and Placed has some new innovative uh, reporting that they've, that they've recently come out with. But specifically with walk and rate, we've actually seen an inverse relationship between clicks and walk-ins which, I mean, it, it goes against the grain of, hey, CTR should be a success metric. In that case, it's actually a, it's, it's an inverse success metric. Mm -hmm. but why, why do you think that would be? I think when you just optimize purely on click-through rates, so not looking at all the other things that occur, mm -hmm. it's an easy metric. It's a common metric. Everybody understands it. If you go back 20 years ago to the early days of digital, click-through rate was what you optimized against. I think people are doing the same thing when it comes to mobile. It's the easy metric. 
But when you start to layer in other things like where did that, where did that click come from? What were the secondary actions that occurred? That's where you can start to optimize a little bit more. But today, if you just optimize purely off of click-through rate, you're getting a lot of garbage. You're getting clicks that aren't qualified. You're getting people that are more likely to click on inventory because it's a bigger part of the ad unit. Um, and those things really show, really show in terms of the in-store visitation rates where we've seen time and time again, the highest click-through rates are negative. Where you look at things like competitive conquesting, where you might go in and say, hey, it's a great strategy to go in and take all my competitors, I'm gonna put a geofence around them, I'm gonna serve up an ad, and I think a bunch of new customers are gonna come into my store. Well, in reality, that's one of the worst performing tactics if your goal is trying to get new customers through your door. Because they're already shopping at your competitor's retailer. They're already eating somewhere else where they did this, decided not to eat at your store. So yes, they're more valuable if you get them to switch, but from a conversion rate standpoint, it's actually not the right approach if you want massive scale to bring new customers into the door. So I think it's just, it's being able to look at that. And I think digital does that from a desktop perspective. It's very deep. Like people look at it down in terms of frequency, the inventory source, the creative type, time of day, day of week. I think with mobile, it's really early days from the sense of attribution is still early. Uh, people are just starting to use our reports with Millennial and say, hey, let me add the digital ROI and let me add the offline ROI, combine those two things together and what we're finding is like nine out of 10 conversions uh, are actually occurring offline for a lot of these campaigns that are happening. Because when you think about it, if you're a Sears, if you're a Target, if you're a Walmart, a lot of the products that you're selling, you're trying to get people to go into the store, buy that lawnmower, buy that washer and dryer, buy that cereal box that you're not gonna necessarily buy online because you saw it on the banner. Right. Yep. Perfect. So, and so I'm shifting gears for a second. Why, what have we learned? You've been at Kantar Shopcom for a while, uh, super strong in the, in the uh, online world. What, what do you, have you learned from mobile that you can, I'm uh, sorry, from online that you can apply to mobile? I think it really is that dimension, uh, dimensionality. It's looking at what else you can break out from the campaign, whether it's what creative message did you use, what was the operating system, what was the phone. I mean, it's really just taking what's special about mobile, which now you can have uh, things like location and geography, and breaking it out for measurement. Um, we can all do control expose. We can all kind of figure out at a high level, but it's really what's special about mobile versus what's special about TV or what's special about adjustable cable. I mean, it's breaking out the interesting facts on what makes mobile different and unique. And I think those are the opportunities to really pull out you know, how to improve your campaign by looking at did one creative message drive uh, conversion, or was it a frequency factor, or was it what phone was used, or what time of day? Um, I also think there's an opportunity that's unique to mobile because it interacts with other media. I mean, you have the opportunity to tweet as you watch TV, or you have the opportunity right. to uh, you know, read an article and immediately search for something. Uh, so there's that whole other aspect of interacting with other media that we can capture and then that we can measure against, and I think that's really unique to mobile. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, Will, uh, Nielsen Catalina is just, they're a household name in CBJ, right? Appreciate that. You're, you're, you're quite welcome. You guys have done a wonderful job there. So how, how does Nielsen Catalina Solutions address the challenges created by mobile? You have a ton of offline CPG spend data. How do you guys activate that in mobile and then, and then be able to measure against it? Yeah, I think you know when we're all talking uh, to CPGs in the market, I think we, we see a, a lot of parallels in mobile today to where desktop was uh, caught five years ago. And I think you know to David's point, mo mobile measurement is still very new outside of the, the click-through rate uh, sort of phenomenon. Um, and I think the, the general questions that we get in mobile are first and foremost from CPGs: Does it actually drive incremental sales? And that's a really nice place to start, uh, as as you know, folks like Rachel are thinking about shifting budget from other mediums uh, to mobile. And then the second one, uh, very much to Wyatt's point, is which are the different tactics within mobile that are absolutely most effective? Uh, and they're looking for some, obviously, some big themes that they can use across campaigns, different kind of targeting strategies, whether it's geofencing or purchase-based or contextual, which of those are really driving incremental sales? Uh, and then finally, they're really looking for some more real-time data um, to actually optimize against. And I think you know, all of that comes back to recently for uh, the kind of offline to online connection, that being made at scale again uh, for the first time uh, by folks like, like Oracle and Data Logics and the Live Ramps and the New Stars of the World who are able to do that and really connect transaction data uh, to mobile exposures to facilitate that kind of measurement. Yeah. I also think, to Will's point, I mean, it's understanding what the purpose of the media is in the, in the whole kind of scope of things. I think it was at the LiveRam conference where a toy company was like, they see people interacting all day mobile, but at 9 o'clock, there's a huge spike in activity on desktop for actual purchases. 
I mean, so that interactivity with mobile all day is very important. Yeah. But if you even go with an attribution of you know, the last media to touch the consumer, it's really not valuing it's, it's what still, mobile it's did all buy. day long. Right, right. Yeah. Yep, agreed, agreed. So, so John, I'm going to direct this both to you and Rachel, because I think you guys will have some fun with this. Um, what advice would you have? So let's take it from the measurement company. What advice would you have for the media planner who needs to explain how it had just ran a, a data logics report and they need to explain how the campaign performed? It's the, the advice to the media planner yeah. that they have to explain how the campaign performed? Right, so, so they'll do the planning and the results come back, a data logics report comes back and they then need to go to their boss, Rachel ostensibly, uh -huh. right? And say, hey look, this is how it performed. So what, what elements are you measuring in your reports? And I think it could, maybe it goes back to what are the essential KPIs of the campaign? Ah, well, store visitation. Yep, is one. Um, so audience quality and then sales lift, mm -hmm. kind of two things you look for. Um, and I think too often there's this expectation that every advertising campaign is gonna drive significant sales lift. Um, that's actually a really high bar. Um, if somebody's buying a lot of cereal, it's really hard to get them to buy more cereal than they bought before. Um, and so switching um, competitive actions, it's tough. I mean, what we try to do in measurement and, and, and what, what Will does at Nielsen Catalina, it's how do we remove all the other factors so we're only looking at the media effect? So it's, it's literally, did I go buy cereal because I saw this tiny little banner ad? That's an incredibly high bar. So I think, yes, you need to look at Lyft, and that's the ROI people are driving towards, but what's the story in that? How can I understand my audience and the media strategy better so I can go again and, and, and do something even better the next time? So open question, we can start with, with Wyatt down at the end. So what's coming down the pipe? Like what, what's in the product line that you're most excited about, either within your company or what anybody in this panel or anybody in the industry is doing? You know, I think it's a little phenomenon of beacons and being able to interact with brick and mortar, um, being able to go into a movie theater and understand what was the actual film they were watching, understanding where you are during your work day and what your habits are. I mean, I think that whole opportunity of interacting more at a ge geographic level and tying it back to consumer purchase behavior or consumer media behavior is really going to start evolving. I don't know if I want to walk down the street and have a ton of offers thrown at me, but I think the worst use case for beacons. Yeah. No, but it's, I think beacons are, um, they're, they're accelerating, well, maybe not accelerating, accelerating is probably not the right word, but they're, they're assisting the evolution of, of, you know, consumers giving up their data, yeah. you know, um, opting in for push notifications, accepting a, a beacon message. So little by little training us, I'll give you a little data, you'll give me something of value and that. So that's why, like, Beacon's historical location and consumer volunteered data um, and how those kind of are going to converge for personalization on both sides, that's what I think is that's the most exciting. exciting. Yeah. 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 And I think people are more and more willing, like, you know, Google Maps was kind of the gateway drug. It sort of trained us that, okay, I'm going to give Google my, you know, my current location and it's going to tell me where I need to go. And, Little by little apps and push notifications and now beacons are, are you know, accelerating that, uh, that change in behavior. And even beyond beacons, I think it's an opportunity for retailers or you know, location geographic based companies to force people to interact mobily when they're in the store. Is that a word, mobily? Um, it is now. When they're in the store or when they're at an event. I mean, if you can create an interactive experience in mobile while you're there, it's, you know, to Rachel's point, it's giving a little bit of information about yourself and then getting something back while you're actually shopping or buying. David, how about you? What, what do you think? What, what, what's, what excites you about the measurement world? I mean, you're really one of the, one of the only uh, truly offline measurement from mobile in terms of foot traffic and where people are. I mean, you've got the largest, largest scale there. What excites you about what either your company is doing or what, what's going on in the industry? I think it's getting down to that purchase level data. I think you've got a great set of folks up here where we get a lot of questions in terms of walked into the store, all right, that's great. What did they buy? How much did they spend? And I think that's kind of closing that entire loop 
to say, saw an ad, walked into the store, what was the purchase rate? Did they actually buy the item that was advertised? Uh, and then were they more likely to buy that item because they saw the advertisement? So I think that's really interesting. I think on the beacon side of things, that's an interesting take. I, I'm waiting for that killer use case to come in though from a consumer standpoint because I think you run the risk of seeing, if, you, if we went back three years ago, it would be NFC codes or NFC chips where it's like, hey, Google's got the new phone, swipe it, you get really cool technology. Yep. Before that was QR codes. Take a picture of it, it's super easy, you get to go there. Then it was RFID, no one uses RFID so, except in the industrial space. So when you combine all those things together, I love the idea of having that granular data as a location company, as people are getting more open to sharing the data. We've got a, one in every 500 adults in the US that have installed an app, double opted in, and we're paying them, we're making a charitable donation, but we're measuring where they go 24 seven. So I think, to your point, people are willing to do a value exchange if you have something that you return back to them. Yeah, the, the problem with Beacons is that so few, most, most brands struggle with their apps, right? Because the app formula is difficult to get right, and. You know, most, most publishers out there haven't really integrated beacons or haven't figured out how they want to monetize them and integrate them and let brands kind of piggyback on that. Except for the big box stores, most, you know, most brands are still figuring out their strategy and that's the, that's the stumbling block is Absolutely. you need the app to be kind of the gatekeeper of the beacon notification. Absolutely. So that's what I think, personally I think QR codes get a bad rep. <laughs> I think they were just misused, but I mean, like they misunderstood QR code. Yes, the poor misunderstood QR code. But I do think beacons, if if the like as an industry, um, we can figure out the app formula, which I know pretty much everyone is trying to figure to to focus on now, large in no small part because of beacons, we'll be able to get to that place. And I think the big play ultimately is once you have all those pieces, is omnichannel to be able to do out of home, to be able to do digital, to be able to do print, TV, all those things where you have a single currency that you could say, this is what the impact of not just one piece of advertising had on driving someone into the store, but all the touch points. But the sale is the holy grail. Yes. I mean, what you start up by saying that's at the end of the day, I just care. Did you, did you buy that car or book that hotel room or see that movie or buy that suit? That's, yeah. that's the only thing that matters at the end of it. So we're going to hear more about this later today, but uh, the, the mobile world is clearly going programmatic. And in many ways, that creates really interesting opportunities around measurement and optimization. Do any of you four guys up here have real-time or near real-time measurement in the works? Love to hear more about it. I think that's one of the things that, that I'm really excited about, um, just in kind of in terms of measurement broadly. You know, whether your KPI is driving, uh, you know, somebody into a retail location, or you know, it's driving somebody to, to purchase a new car or uh, buy that that next box of Cheerios. I think that more real-time aspect uh, of measurement, kind of getting to where desktop has has kind of recently um, been able to get to, is uh, I think is really exciting for for Nielsen Catalina. Um, we have something coming out in mobile um, very shortly uh, that will enable some real-time sales signals for different parts of the campaign. Again, that the kind of notion of uh, different audience strategies or different creatives that you might be testing and being able to make those decisions and, and refine your campaign based on what's actually driving truly incremental sales rather than um, sort of what's been the default historically, which is obviously click-through rate in mobile. Yeah, I'll jump on that. So um, in terms of real-time programmatic, we've got two things in the works. Um, one is individual level sales data, so we call it sales signal. Um, so that's literally sending at an ID level, did this person buy the product they're interested in? And so throughout the course of a campaign, you're getting that feedback. So just as you would, oh, these people clicked, let's go find more of them. It's, oh, these people actually bought during the campaign, let's go find more of those people. Um, and then the second thing is basically what we call buy-through rate and having that dashboard as something throughout the entire campaign so I can assess the quality of various audiences based on how they're buying. So let's try a whole bunch of different strategies at once and then observe how those are performing throughout the campaign. I mean, for us, I think it's really, you know, how can the real-time data have an effect? I mean, the retailer might not be able to get more product to the store in time. So what we're really focusing on is that historical aspect. I mean, we want to be able to serve up real-time information that as someone evolves through their purchase journey that you can reference back and see where else they shopped or what other brands so they bought. So you look at when, when they bought, how often they bought. Yeah. It's and really focusing that on that historical information that the next time you're gonna to touch that consumer. Yeah, you've got context on, on their purchase history. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think from, uh, from our standpoint, about a year ago, Teresa, millennial, 
uh, we actually started processing individual line items so that you can actually optimize against those different line items to say, for this type of uh, client, these types of inventory sources, these types of targeting tactics work really well. And that's actually- And, and creative. And creative, right? absolutely. And that's actually accelerated things for us now where we're starting to look for partners at inventory source. And you see an 8x difference just at the exchange level in terms of performance on the back end to say, for this client, these exchanges work better than these others. So we've been, we've been in market, I don't know, 18, 18, 20 months now with what we used to call it omni measurement. Now we call it real world attribution because now we've got all these different types of measurement solutions. As, as our uh, amazing sales team goes into market and, and goes out and sells campaigns and the measurement that goes around it, um, they, we're not getting measurement on 100% of our campaigns. We just don't. As the BD guy, I'm not in these sales calls, so I don't really know exactly what's going on in these conversations, but I would love to hear from really all five of you, maybe starting with you, Rachel, like, is there, is there a reason that measurement is not, is it not tied into a campaign? Is it just campaign size? Is it the type of the campaign? That, that what, the full spectrum yeah. of measurement isn't yeah. tied in? Um, and I think it's awareness. I think, well, I think more than anything, it's the frenetic pace in the media agencies. You know, figuring this stuff out takes time, and it takes time that quite often teams don't have. Um, so how can these guys help you, help your team oh, gosh, be better? They can come in and work for me. That <laughs> has enabled me to scale my efforts. Um, I think um, it seems so simple, but keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep enabling me to explain it to the senior most team members on each account in the most digestible, easy to read kind of way. Because there's something you said before, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something about you know adoption of mobile within the agency red side world. And I think the people who are the hands-on planners, like literally the kids out of college right. who are doing the right. plans. I'm glad you said it, not me. They get it um, because they're digital natives and this is how they live their daily lives. So they, they actually really understand the, the role of, I, I don't really like the word mobile, but um, you know, they understand the, the concept of mobility and multi-screening and, and why all of this is important. But more often than not, the people that they're laddering up to, I don't want to say don't understand it, but don't understand it as well. So is it, their, is it the four gentlemen on this panel, is it their job and their team's job to get in and, and to, you, to your team and have conversations with them and evangelize on their own behalf? Yeah, I think so. Well, to continue helping me and my team because really, oops, within, Within the mobile, people who are the mobile spokespeople or the mobile point people within agencies are, are pretty small teams. Um, they're usually you know, a small center of excellence and they're trying to cover a lot of ground. So I think helping us cover that ground, helping us explain to each of these, you know, each of the you know, different verticals that I referenced before, this is what location and real time measurement and then the application of historical location, which I find incredibly interesting and probably the most valuable metric when it comes to mobile, not just, you know, where am I, where am I now, but where am I habitually, and how's that juxtaposed to the things I do on a daily basis, helping them understand the value of that and helping the senior most people understand the value of that is very important. And I find often that vendors concentrate on the younger people because the younger people get it, and the younger people are going to have more time to take your meeting and be more willing to take your meeting, but you have to, to focus on the senior most people yep. within agencies and on count teams and make it really easy for them to understand. You got it, guys? You want to sell more measurement? Get in there, get in there more often. Uh, we've got about four or five minutes left. Love to open it up for questions. If there, if there are any questions from, from the audience, you can use your crowd mics app, or I think there's, there are a couple of microphones running around. Perfect. Okay, uh, yeah, you can use crowd mics, talk into your phone, just like I'm doing. Uh, uh, I do have a text comment while you guys are getting logged back in. By the way, the passcode is one, two, three to join the crowd mic session. So from Mike, Mike um, Dedlani said, when you mention value exchange, what do you think is the most effective way to get a consumer to part ways with their purchase information? Convenience. I mean, convenience yeah. always wins, right? If you're, giving, if you're making a transaction easier and more fluid to, for someone, they're, they're going to hand over yeah, that. And I don't think anyone's cracked that. There's so many apps that I've seen out there or like, you know, shopper marketing companies that say, we're going to get them to take a picture of their receipt and then, you know, then we're going to know what they bought. I'm like, ah, no. Because I'm like, I'm the prototypical 
household decision-making mom, I am not taking a picture of my receipt. Right. I'm just not doing it. I don't have that much time in the day. Um, but so if yeah, it, it is if, of use. Yeah, if it recognizes your credit card or your phone that when I swipe a checkout, I'm automatically getting that discount, yeah, yeah I'm going to give up. I think integration of mobile payments and especially, especially mobile couponing, loyalty, rewards, you know, use of points into digital mediums, especially into apps, that that's going to make it easy. And you know, anything you do to increase friction in my daily life, is, is going to be a win for you. Yeah, I think the notion of, of being passively measured is really kind of the key. And whether it's a loyalty card that you're using and, and it's obviously being ascribed to sort of your identity uh, in an anonymous way, or you know, it's a credit card or it's a mobile payment system, I think you know, having, to your point, that sort of passive measurement is really key, not only from an accuracy standpoint, but from getting folks to, to allow you to use their data. Well, I think the whole concept of loyalty, I mean, when you look at Starbucks and you know, their loyalty program being in-store, and now you also get points when you buy beans you know, at the grocery store, manufacturers are taking a lot of different approaches of that data exchange, you know, beyond just the retailer. Now it's being brought into, you know, the manufacturer's side. And I think that's, that's how you get people to supply information is by giving them a benefit. And, and there's also the convenience factor of the Starbucks app, right? So you never have to go into your, into your wallet. You just, here's the app, right? right. And so, yeah, I think convenience wins over. Anything else? We've, we've got another one from Stonehaeon Yum says, what would be the best measurement besides TR in mobile retargeting? Besides CTR? Besides CTR. Yeah, besides CTR. Um, I mean, it just really depends on the, the KPI for the, for the client, right? And so if you're you know, trying to drive you know, incre incremental kind of a portion of it at your store, then obviously you know, what David's doing at, at place is, is huge. If you're trying to drive somebody to take a, an incremental action like a, a purchase, uh, then using offline sales is, is great. But it might be that you really want to just grow brand equity. And at that point, some sort of behavior, or, um, some sort of online sort of you know, survey might be the, the right metric for you. So I, I'll take that one in a, in a little bit different way, which is sometimes we focus almost too much on the KPI and we lose sight of the basics. So if I'm a marketer, I think, number one, did a human see the ad, right? So well, we, that's telling we, we, from, we, we from just, Michael's announcement we this just morning. You saw that, that done, yeah. okay? Human saw the Check ad, 100% viewability guaranteed. Goodbye yeah. here, find yeah. your millennial sales rep. Um, but <laughs> number, number two is, is it the right audience? Um, am I actually hitting people who are, the, who are qualified for this? Um, and then number three is the KPI. And so I worry that if I'm just driving towards the click constantly or, or even any of these metrics, am I, am I maybe rewarding bad behavior and maybe hitting non-viewable or maybe hitting the wrong audience? I think it's really interesting to think of targeting and, and I guess audience verification as a metric. It's yeah. usually thought of. And so you kind of see those solutions coming out from, um, you have Nielsen OCR and, and Comscore Com VCE as a, as a demo-based view. And I think that's a good start, but I also think we can do, we can do better than that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, the red light's blinking at us, so I think it's time for us to head out. But we may not have convinced everybody in this room that CTRs uh, can kiss my A dollar sign, dollar sign, but uh, hopefully it is not the key indicator that you use for campaign success. And, and thank you to my, to my esteemed panelists who are some of the most thoughtful uh, in the industry and doing some of the best work. So thank you very much.